you know, they're very, very sweet people. And they actually sort of gave us uh, the option, you know, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to really say this too much, but. But uh, let's welcome back the fantabulous Mr. Steve Gonzalez. Oh, wow. It's quite an intro. I love your opening too. Goodness. Yes, Thank I love you. the new, great, amazing, cool, new intro that we've got. Amazing job, Jude. There Heck yeah. Applause, applause, applause. And of course, Steve, you had to be part of our intro because you're such a Duh. big part of, of our Tuck Culture family. Welcome back once again. And to get started, we had a whole bunch of people message us and they're like, you know, it was just Steve's birthday. So mm. we wanted like, to yeah. wish you a very, very, <laughs> very, very happy birthday. Yay! Thank you very much. Uh, it hey, was cheers. a great birthday. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Oh, well, is that Starbucks? What, what are you drinking? It's, of course. Yeah. Always Starbucks. Of always, course, always Starbucks. Always. Um, but so, thank you, ladies. It's very nice of you. Uh, it was a great birthday. Spent it in Lexington, Kentucky with a bunch of great people. Tango, his wife, Lisa, and a lot of friends. So it was great. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that, that must be pretty rad having like a birthday around, I mean, the best time of the year. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I tell you what, I was at a horror convention for my birthday and word got around that it was my birthday. So um, I got a lot of gifts. You know, that's the place. <laughs> Uh, to yes. have uh, a birthday is at a, a horror convention because uh, everything I got was horror related. Uh, amazing stuff. Someone crocheted me a uh, haunted mansion, a uh, home, uh, you know, it was really beautiful. Anyway, sorry. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that's so cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, we want to know. <laughs> a cro okay, so haunted mansion crocheted thingy. Yeah, it says, welcome <laughs> foolish mortals has the... Um, the wallpaper in the background and really sweet hand handmade very that's nice really young cool. gal man, yeah pe people very are fortunate. so creative man that's and especially at, at horror conventions i was at a convention this past weekend too horror related as well and some of the stuff that you see in the artist alley i'm just so blown away by people's creativity it's it's insanity it's pretty nuts honestly people put a lot of you know time and effort and work and heart and soul and love and dedication and all of that into you know what they make and bring to these uh, conventions and you, you find that especially the horror conventions a lot of those artists take their work very personal you know it's like they put a piece of themselves in every single thing they make and i don't know that you find that at like pop culture conventions or even some of the sci-fi conventions i'm sure you do but horror seems to be a very you know a specific audience it's really awesome true and the person that made that for you Brittany, is chatting with us now and they said it's from them and it was a cross stitch which is good epic. job yeah that's, oh. that's so epic. cool what did i call it i think we said crochet crochet <laughs> which is fine too i'm sure that would be wonderful as crochet but yeah. cross stitch, uh, but yeah, either way cool. it was beautiful uh thank you uh, it was quite a nice and i got a lot of stuff i don't mean to just point that one out but people are very sweet it always takes me by surprise Aww, you are loved by many. Mm -hmm. oh, goodness. Well, we were talking about this a little bit before the stream, but um, what are uh, some other conventions? Do you have anything else coming up? Ooh, the only thing we have lined up right now, besides some stuff for uh, 2022, 20, uh, uh, we have in uh, Vegas, a convention called the Vegas Para Unity Convention. <laughs> and yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a paranormal convention, but um, it's it's huge. I don't, I, everybody you can think of that's been on a paranormal television show um, is there. Even like you know Josh Gates. Not that he's paranormal, um, but you know adventure and, and he does some paranormal. Even like Kane yes. Hodder. They have some horror <gasps> people sprinkled in there. Yes, <laughs> love us some Kane Hodder. That's great. oh, he's the best. Mm -hmm. He's the coolest. I always find it so fascinating too, like the puns and the names of these conventions, how people get so creative. Para Unity, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I like, uh, it, I like it. It'll be fun though. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm trying to Thank see you. who's on your shirt because you always have the best oh. wardrobe. Oh, yeah. You have the best shirts. Nice. Oh, they live? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, go. Going for a little um, they live. That's right. An artist named Joel Robinson. Look him up. He's absolutely. Amazing. Joel Robinson. Cool. Yay. Yep. 
right. Danny, what yeah. you got? So. Shout out, Joel. Yay. Oh, no. Shout out all the artists. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we have to talk about Broadway things. Very important. So, yeah. So, Broadway, Broadway, yeah. So, Beetlejuice will be in its new home in April, if we saw correctly. Um, big question is, are you going to be seeing it again? And what are your thoughts about it being in its new home? Absolutely. I was uh, one of those people that right at 10 a.m. October 1st, I was like, <laughs> and uh, I loaded up. I got tickets for opening weekend. got tickets for a few other weekends and a few days sprinkled here and there. I just kind of went crazy. Um, well, so excited. Sure you can see it. I mean, yeah. I know. I can't like not just see it, but it, it's, I feel like it's part of my DNA. Like I need to mm -hmm. go every opportunity that I can. So uh, I'm going to see it a bunch. And I know they haven't released the cast yet, but I think everybody's pretty hopeful that Alex Brightman will reprise his role. Yes. Um, will Blum, awesome too. You know, whoever it is, I'm sure will be fantastic. But, you know, Alex just kind of has a piece of my heart, not in a weird way, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, he, he really slayed it. And, and like you said, I, I did see and I did hear some stuff with the other gentleman that was playing Beetlejuice as well. And he's fantastic. And I like that he did a different interpretation of it. It is mm -hmm. not the same. And I like that's what's so cool about the role of Beetlejuice is, you know, it is kind of choose how you want to do it. You know, there's no set way. So, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, super excited. I did get to see a show recently. My first show since Broadway reopened, I saw a Little Shop of Horror. It's off <gasps> yes! Broadway, but uh, yeah, it was so good. It was so yeah. good. That's so yeah. I mean, oh, one of very jealous. One of it's Danica fine. and my favorites, and I favorite. love the gentleman that's playing Seymour. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how did you like Audrey? How did she do? You know, she was great. Um, acting was good. She um, didn't. What I kind of liked about it, which may bother some people, is that she didn't try to reinvent the role. She didn't try to do it. She was, you know, exactly how you would expect. The same voice. I mean, I don't know if she has that raspy voice when she talks, but singing, she nailed it. Um, yeah, I thought it was was awesome. The uh, the, the singing voice for the Audrey too um, was outrageously good. I, I thought it was a track. Mm. Like I didn't think it was somebody actually singing. He sounded nice. so good. But then he comes out at the end, you know, in his suit, and he's like, and then they I'm like, holy sh shoot, that is you know a live person back there. It's I pretty love crazy. That. I Holy shoot! That. Holy <laughs> shoot! Yeah. I'm that more. But uh, kids show. Said, yeah, fair enough. Well, <laughs> one, one of the other things, like, um, I, I don't know about all the conventions, but some comic cons like will do shadow casts, especially of mm. Rocky Horror. And this past weekend, there was a shadow cast for Beetlejuice, so I thought that was pretty neat. Beetlejuice the really? musical. Oh. Yeah. Did you take any pictures? Did you? No, no, I didn't really get to. Uh, no, and, and it's busy. not. Yeah, it's not like they're playing it behind them, but they like were doing a pretty big production of it, and it was a female Beetlejuice. So yes, I, hey. you know, I'm into it. Appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, okay. So Broadway, we're very excited. So okay. Well, I, there's I one other like thing. So I, go when this comes to Broadway, I highly recommend Steve that you see it. Um, so I am seeing this in Chicago. It is uh, about to go to Broadway soon, and my pup is whining about something. Who knows? Um, but it is a show called Paradise Square. Paradise Square. I don't know of yes. it. My goodness. So it is uh, beginning in Chicago. I believe next weekend is uh, starting previews and everything. Um, so I am actually fortunate enough that I will be going up to Chicago next week or the week after that, something, um, in order to see the show because my friend is the lyricist for that show. And this is the first time I've been able to see a show of his. He's the same guy that did the lyrics for Tuck Everlasting and for Amelie. Ooh, so no I'm big like, deal. This is, yeah, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> no big deal. This is the first time I've been able to see one of his shows. And I'm really excited. And everybody is, is talking it up like crazy. The music is, of course, genius. So I have to recommend, as soon as that goes to Broadway, get a ticket. <laughs> What's it called? I'm going to be really rude, but I need to oh, write yeah. this down. Paradise what is it called? Square. Paradise Square. Not circle. Yes. Not circle. Square. Yes. Paradise square. Yes. I'm in. Fantastic. <laughs> well, Steve, of course, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about 
ghost hunters, ghost nation, all of the above, all of the wonderfulness. And so now being back to ghost hunters, what would you say are the biggest differences between this, the old ghost hunters and ghost nation? Oh, there it is. How fabulous. Oh, Returning look at that. On Fancy. Oh, the trailer. Even the trailer is such a good teaser. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're going to put out a few more uh, trailers this week. I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll see a lot more popping up and uh, there'll be some uh, good people will get some sneak peeks and, and different things. Uh, I'm learning that with the new streaming service, like linear television, actual you know television would airs live, uh, or not live, but you know airs as it's supposed to. Uh, everything comes up saying, "Don't forget this is happening, this is happening." But in the streaming world, everything happens once it's already there, and you're telling the people go see this now. It's not a don't forget. So. Leading up to it, people will see a lot more sort of sneak peeks and different, uh, they call them assets, but that's, I don't know, that's, a, I guess, an, an internal jargon word. I just call it a trailer preview, whatever, you know. Uh, they'll see a lot more of, of that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really cool. The differences, that's a great question. Um, you know, Ghost Nation it was awesome and very, very close to us, uh, obviously it was, a personal show very much so where, you know, when we went into it, we made sure that we don't want to leave these places until, you know, we actually have, you know, the case finished. We bring it to fruition, whether that takes a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, doesn't matter. We're there for that amount of time. Uh, and that was awesome, uh, you know, uh, but with Ghost Hunters, it was a little bit different. You know, it, it was more sort of a preliminary investigation. And then once we moved on from that, you know, it was sort of just like, you know, we, we handed it off to a local team uh, or a local TAPS team. We have TAPS teams all over the country, all over the world, actually. But, um, you know, to sort of do what we call aftercare, where now, you know, we're taking that sort of mission statement from, you know, what we brought with the, the other show and uh, incorporating it uh, into this. You know, we're not leaving these places until uh, we are actually helping people. And... You know, with the original Ghost Hunters, it was became very much the, you know, the pursuit to get the best piece of evidence that will change everybody's mind. The, the pursuit to get this, you know, where uh, we're really focusing on on the people and what's what's happening. But what's nice about Ghost Hunters is we get to really sort of spread our wings, if you will. You know, Ghost Nation private residence is a lot. We're helping people towards the the end. With COVID and everything, we had to start getting into some bigger places because it was hard to get into people's homes. Um, but on Ghost Hunters, you know, it's that open format where we can go to people's houses, help them, but we can also do places like asylums and all these big, awesome places. That's a lot of fun for investigators. But, you know, we were going to do a, another season of Ghost Nation, luckily, you know, Travel Channel and Discovery Plus, uh, they are absolute and i'm not saying this just because i work for them but they're absolute dream boats of, of of people they, they really are uh, you expect you know people in suits barking orders but you know it's all just hugs and kisses and laughter and and you know they're very very sweet people and they actually sort of gave us uh, the option you know and i'm not sure if i'm supposed to really say this too much but when they uh, you know came up to us with this idea they said hey this is you know something that we could do but uh, we're not going to do it or sign it unless it's you guys. You know, we're not going to let them recast it. We're not going to. So you let us know. Do you want to do this or do you want to? So uh, it was a, you know, we did some soul searching and, and some back and forth. And uh, we decided uh, Ghost Hunters would be, you know, uh, the best route to, to, to go. Just because it was, you know, ours for, for 15 years. And then whatever happened, happened. And, and Ghost Nation was amazing. And that landed us a new home, you know, but now. Uh, Ghost Hunters. Yeah. Thanks. That was a, a long answer to a, a short question. But <laughs> no, no, that was Good wonderful. Answer. And and I love like everyone in the comments and I couldn't agree mm -hmm. more. What I mean, I couldn't think of a possible better way to spend Halloween mm -hmm. that, you know, it's going to be on the service that day. I think that's wonderful. You know, as we... <sighs> I don't know how to say this because like I, I hate to think that I can't just go out and go trick-or-treating like how I used to and so like as I get older I like to find new traditions mm -hmm. and like it seems like starting this 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 year I have a new tradition 
And so it's exciting, you know. Dance. Yeah. I'm a no, part of, of that course. tradition now. You're yeah, part. Yeah. You're, you're starting it. Yeah. So, Thanks. Yes. Hell yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. That's actually really awesome. You know, someone who loves Halloween, it's always meant a lot to me that people, especially when we were doing the live shows, because we would do them live on Halloween. So our Halloween uh, was was work. Uh, you know, not complaining. It's great work and, and a lot of fun. But um, through that, we would have just tons of people saying, you know, you're my Halloween, you're my Halloween. And so to be somebody else's sort of what they do on Halloween uh, really means a lot. It's quite special, honestly. It's pretty effing cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep going on this line of questioning, but um, so, you know, we've we've all become really familiar with all of you, with, with you and Jason and Tango and Sherry, but, um, what, and you know, we've all kind of formed our own thoughts of what we think everybody brings to the table, but what would you say are everybody's individual strengths, um, that you separately bring to the table that makes you such a strong team? Wow. Danica, that's a quite a loaded <laughs> question. Holy. Uh, let's see. Um, I mean, what have you done? Uh, we definitely all bring, you know, uh, uh, different strengths uh, to, to what we do. Uh, I would say, you know, look, we'll start with Jason. Uh, of course, um, without him, I don't think any of us would be doing this in a, the television world. Um, so he is somebody that we all hold in, in high regard. And uh, he's obviously the most valuable uh, part uh, of our team. And he brings, you know, it, it may be weird to say, but he brings strength, I would say, strength and that, um, to use a Disney term, uh, term, a stick to -ativity, is that what he, what he says or, or whatever it is? Um, we're like, that's, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, not thinking everything is, is, a, is a ghost, not everything is, and he's somebody in my early days, like I worked uh, with the, the Warrens for quite some time. And uh, when I was working with them, you know, orbs or ghosts, a lot of different things are, are were considered paranormal. And, and honestly, he was the, the one that uh, really got me to push forward and not think that everything and to really take it not just to the next level, but a few levels to say, whoa, whoa, what could it really be? You know, let's figure this out. Um, and, you know, he's the first one uh to help out with anything you know i could be looking at this what is this thing and he'll just grab it and be like look and then hand it back to me you know and, and like uh that's pretty awesome sometimes i may just stand next to him looking bewildered hoping he'll do that you know because like, i know he'll just grab it and fix uh, whatever um but anyway uh tango you know uh, i say this uh, you know, and he, and he probably thinks I'm kidding because I do say it to him too, but Tang is kind of a, a genius. Uh, you know, he his brain works in ways that other people don't. Mine certainly doesn't. He has a, a different way of looking at things, a different way of figuring things out. And uh, whenever I need advice uh, with anything in life, uh, and I mean it, anything, he's who I go to. And uh, whether it's the paranormal, whether it's you know, relationships, whether it's just life experience questions, you know, advice, uh, he's my dude. So like, uh, he brings that to every investigation too, just that next level of thought and, uh, you know, figuring skills. Uh, he's, he's at a, a high level uh, where some, you know, myself included may not excel in, in that area. Uh, and of course with the tech business, he's, he's just the best there is. Uh, Sherry, you know, she is somebody who, uh, one thing I really like about her is kind of nothing's a ghost. You know, like it could be right in front of her, and she's kind of like, uh, "Is it?" Uh, you know, like. But I love that because having that skeptical mindset, not being a skeptic, because skeptics have an agenda. You know, they don't believe, and they don't want other people to believe. So they have an agenda behind what they're doing. But to have a skeptical mindset, uh, I think, is uh, quite. Uh, valuable and and she has that in they call that spades in spade or I don't even know what that phrase is who knows I need to stop a using spade is a spade it. I, 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 whatever it is she has that in bundles and um, like that's that. really cool and you know she works her her bum off uh, which is 
is great. By the time I get to one camera, she has four set up. Um, and so when you're, you know, wiring places like Waverly Hills and all these huge asylums, uh, you need someone like that, quite uh, honestly. And, you know, aside from her with the rest of the team, uh, you know, you'll see Amy and Adam quite a bit. You'll see Dustin quite a bit and, and maybe even some other uh, surprises. Uh, when it comes to myself, I don't want to say that I bring anything to the team that uh, nobody else does because uh, we're all kind of scientifically minded, scientifically minded. But I try to keep in mind things like if it disobeys the laws of science, um, I am you know misinterpreting the experience or it's in my head, like a mm -hmm. telephonic or audiophonic sound or visual, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, I think I bring that to it. Uh, you know, for instance, we had theories all the time that uh, limestone and quartz would hold energy or maybe even be able to use like a cell. Um, so I didn't want to just take that as paranormal theory. I went and talked to 20 physicists and got all of the real deal answers. And, and you know, they told us like, yeah, uh, limestone, maybe a little bit, but quartz for sure can hold energy and, and release it at certain times. And um, even, you know, we, we threw around different theories that running water could work as a bit of a, uh, so I went to these physicists to get the root. So we don't just, we're not just, you know, running around in circles, chasing our own tails and pretending things are what they aren't, you know, and, and they all said that's not possible. You know, the earth can't create its own charge. It's a law of science. So that's out the window. But learning from that, uh, they did say all of them. Uh, that if there was a body of water that was struck by lightning in such a way, maybe a few times that that body of water could hold a charge for a short period of time. So if there is an inlet or an outlet to that body of water, perhaps some of it could get somewhere. But other than that, uh, you know, I, I'd say that's sort of what I love in that field is trying to sleuth it out. I'm no scientist by any stretch of the imagination and I would never insult anybody in the scientific community by pretending. I only regurgitate what I've read and, and learned through people who are much smarter uh, than I am. Uh, but it, it's important to know uh, the facts. Uh, you know, in, in this field, there are no facts, but in science, there are. And the thing about science is, whether you believe in it or not, it's true. You know, you can, <laughs> you can accept or not, but that doesn't matter. You know, like it's true regardless. So you might as well uh, accept it. it. It's not a subjective truth. You know, it's objective. Yeah. It is. Uh, that's it. But and we appreciate that how much we can learn from your learning as well. So because mm -hmm. because it's all fascinating and it's all, you know, all these things that the theories that you test and that you put into practice and we go, oh, OK, we get it now. Sleuth yeah. it out. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Sleuth <laughs> it out. We Sleuth it out. <laughs> Put that on uh, the chat. <laughs> 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 Let's Let's see. See. Sleuth it out. <laughs> Next well, time you see me at a convention, I'll have a whole sleuth it out. All all these shirts behind me. <laughs> and a line out the door. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yes. Uh, Danica and I will be the first to purchase. Uh, oh, so one of the other things I, I wanted to ask about was, you know, in addition to being on the show, you're also a producer. So I wanted to know what, what can you tell us about being part of the production of the show as well? Yeah, you know, it's, it's quite important, uh, honestly, uh, to be able to have your fingers in that side of things. And it just allows for, you know, the difference is if you're on a TV show and you're a cast member, you know, you get there and everything is there and, and you know what, you don't know what you're going to do. Like, you don't know what's going to be said. You don't, but, you know, there are already tentpole things that are set out for you where, you know, being involved as a producer, you get to help, you know, create what is going into it. You get to help nuance it. You know, for instance, we're talking about, and I'll just give you a quick, for instance, uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, different things that might be in a, a basement under this, you know, sub flooring. And, uh, you know, so if, if I were to just be on the cast side of things, I would show up and say, okay, cool. This is the basement. Let me see what I could, but being on the producer side, I could say, well, why don't we get a, you know, a, an archeological historian in there to really see what the, you know, and that, so you get to nuance things in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, we also get to see, 
you know, cuts of the episodes before they air, where if you're a cast member, you have no, it just goes to air and that's it. You just are along for the ride, good, bad, or in between. Uh, but being able to see it and, you know, that that's important too, because you'll catch things, you know, and it's, if you're not in the field, uh, you know, you're not really going to know. So we may be talking about, you know, I grabbed my EMF gauge, this and that, but they'll show, you know, a little B-roll shot of a laser grid, you know, and I'm like, hey, that's not a laser grid, <laughs> you know, we're <laughs> like, if we weren't watching the cuts, that may slip through, and then the audience would think that this EMF gauge is actually a laser grid, like that kind of thing. So mm. uh, there, there is a, a lot of value to it, and um, it's good. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. It's uh, hard to, to you know, get to that level where they're consider you a producer and give you that credit and let you have that that uh, feedback uh, but uh, it's definitely uh, valuable for, for the shows uh, absolutely awesome uh before we go to your question danica there's a couple people asking about your film and if there is possibly going to be a follow-up for the house in between or anything like that yeah. That's a great question. Uh, and thank you. Uh, the uh, documentary, um, you know, we put it out to uh, maybe two years now. No, it was it was last year. I want to say not the May that just passed, but maybe the May before that. Uh, I, I forget. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's it, it was, you know, it, it lo I mean, my my, uh, you know, mission there was to tell a story. Uh, of Alice so that she can get real world answers, real deal answers for what's happening there. And really, you know, the success of the documentary didn't really matter to me at that moment. Cause I, you know, didn't, that was just my, um, but in terms of performance, luckily it, it did quite well. And uh, you know, is there going to be a part two? Uh, I will say there, there will be a continuation of the story um, and maybe what has happened in, in her world. and um, But whether that's a documentary, whether that's just written word or even just a, a podcast, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. But there'll be some announcements in regards to uh, where that is headed. Uh, some of the most beautiful people in my life live there in Mississippi. Um, so, you know, any chance I can get to go there. Uh, Mary Alice Heydrich, who's the, you know, the historian, uh, in that movie, just the sweetest lady. Everything. She's ninety-seven now, um, but we just hug and kiss and like, oh, she's such a not kiss, but you know what I mean. Like we, we she's a such a, a dreamboat of a woman, and she's become very, very close to me. And, and same with Alice and Brad and John and everybody there. Um, they'll be in my life forever, you know, documentary or not. Uh, they're they're my friends, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's it was awesome. A good experience and. Uh, yeah, I hope to, I'm going to Vegas in December and I'm gonna try to swing down and stop in Mississippi and, and see them all on my way out there. That's great. Uh, people wanna know where's the best place to watch your documentary? Ooh, well that depends on the people. Uh, like for instance, if you have uh, Amazon Prime, it's free there if you, you know, so you might as well watch it there. But if you don't have Prime, uh, you can see it anywhere that you watch movies, you know, except for like Netflix, that's a different, uh, you know, that's a licensing type of deal that could come uh, in the future. Um, but in terms of if you're going to, you know, watch a movie, it, it's everywhere. The Amazon, the PlayStation, the Xbox, the uh, Apple, iTunes, uh, all of that. Even some stations are airing it, or you could buy it, like in Walmarts and Best Buys and all that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Man, I miss those days of like going to the store and like just purchasing all the CDs, all the movies. I need to get back into doing that. Mm -hmm. I still try to do it through Target. Um, I still try to cruise the like the five dollar movies at Target, big time, because yeah. it's the closest I can get to going to Blockbuster. I know. <laughs> oh God, I can't. I'm gonna get too nostalgic. out. That's a whole <laughs> or Hollywood <sighs> video. Sorry. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Hollywood video. My yeah. goodness. Blockbuster wasn't the mm. only game in town. <laughs> That's true. Competition, competition's key. <laughs> <laughs> and they're oh. both dead now. So let's <laughs> move on to um, a very important question, of course. How are you celebrating your ghost tober? Oh, that's a great question. I will. Uh, be tuned in to Discovery Plus. Oh, 
<laughs> all month long, especially on Halloween. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> um, aside from that, I think I'm going to go hang out with my nephews for a little bit on Halloween. Uh, and then probably meet up with some friends in the evening. I haven't decided if it'll be like a bar or a party. Uh, I'm kind of not really in the mood for a house party, uh, but been invited to a few of those. Um, I'm trying to figure it out too. I have, no <laughs> yeah. I, I have this brilliant costume and no idea what to do. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, go show it off wherever it can be seen. Uh, they're like, live next to Salem and that used to be the thing to do. You know, you go to Salem for Halloween and, and I love that obviously, but they're kind of curmudgeons now about it. You know, they make everybody get off the streets by like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. You have to be inside a, a, a structure. All the bars are closing early and it's just mm -hmm. not what it used to be. Yeah. They used to embrace it and it was like a whole block party in the whole city until like four in the morning, but uh, they're not into that anymore. Uh, I get it. People want to sleep at a normal hour. Like, I, I guess so. Just move yeah. out of Salem. You know what yeah. it's all about. Get out. <laughs> like, Amen. Yeah. Know where you live. Come on. We'll move in. Y'all move out. You know, like I, you clearly, we all know where you live and you live there for a reason. So let's party. Yeah. That's right. Sure. Let's party. Well, One night a week. That's all we ask. I mean, a year. One night a year. <laughs> A week. <laughs> one night a week, if you're Steve. <laughs> so, uh, so, so one of the other things, uh, you had posted a Ghosttober survey, and Danik and I were reading through a couple of the things, and you had mentioned that you enjoy studying demons. So is there a particular case that you find most fascinating, and what sign should we look for if we think that we spot a demon? <sighs> That's a, those are all very good questions. You, you know, I, I don't think I have a favorite specific uh, story or, you know, a case. Uh, there was a, a case uh, quite some time ago that the Warrens studied with a Portuguese fella. And uh, when I was like 17 or 18, they showed me the video, not just me, it was a, a group of like 10 or 15 of us. And you can still see that video sometimes. Um, I think John Zappis has a, a copy of it, but um, you could literally see this guy's like head splitting open and blood trickling down and like really weird, awful, awful stuff. Um, but uh, I do have some favorite, you know, uh, investigators, demonologists, people who I, I follow their work. And one of them certainly being uh, John Zappis, you know, who's Ed Warren's nephew. And uh, he's just uh, so well versed and smart in, in that. It's his whole world. You know, uh, Adam Bly is somebody I respect quite deeply, and he has some material out there you can read. And he's actually um, one of uh, a very few who actually do exorcisms and things like that for the church. He actually, right now, is traveling uh, and teaching priests how to do. You know, demonic research and, and work very, very, and he's doing that through the church. It's a, a pretty dang awesome. Um, Carl Johnson is somebody I, I, I admire quite a bit. Uh, he's another person that digs into the uh, demonology side of things there. Uh, those three, I think, it would be the, uh, you know, Reverend, one thing, and, and, you know, Reverend Billy Bean is someone, he's a gentleman we, we work with, and, and, he, I don't think he considers himself a demonologist necessarily or somebody, but he's on, you know, the, 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 the religious side of it, the other side of it, the, the angelic side. And uh, he has a tremendous amount of knowledge in that regard. And we actually had him come in on a case once the saddest case ever. I want to talk about it cause I, I get a little, little, little crazy, but uh, uh, he came in and the house uh, was honestly like really gross and not, not, aesthetically but just feeling and awful and you could mm -hmm. just tell and um the um when he came in and he did his whole thing there um i never experienced this before but it was a tangible difference like in in the home even the, the camera crew and these are guys who and, and girls who don't even believe in or care about the paranormal they're just there to document us you know and and they would even walked in and were like holy shoot, like what, what is going on here? I want to like, you know, smell flowers and, and watch, you know, Disney movies. Oh, what is it? It's a completely different 
you know, vibe and, and, and feel. Um, so he's somebody that, that I have a lot of respect for as well, but he's not necessarily a, a demonologist. When it comes to signs, you know, there are some te- what they call tells, you know, if you're dealing with something inhuman or, you know, demonic falls under the old, what we consider an inhuman type of haunting, something that was never uh, on earth in, in living form, like a, a human, you know, something that is just energy based. You can call them demons. You can call them whatever you want. There's a lot of different terms for them. But uh, one thing that they like to do is make it uncomfortable for the living, you know, people who are there in the space or they want to conduct their, you know, whatever they're doing, their evil bidding or whatever, whatever it is. And um, you will get uh, things like uh, temperature fluctuations, just like you see in the movies, right? But uh, it's usually really, really quick and instant. So it'll go uh, 80 degrees to like 10 degrees to, you know, and it'll happen instantly, not, it won't just come. And it's trying to make you uncomfortable, trying to get you out of that space. Um, You'll smell sulfur, that's very common, Uh, sulfur, uh, burning flesh is very, very common. Uh, feces, yeah, you'll smell feces, you'll smell vomit. Just everything that could be vile to a human, they, they're doing to get you out of there, out of that situation. And that's one of the things that we, you know, I pick up on. If there is something and all of a sudden we're smelling sulfur and like, you know, human excrement and we shouldn't be, uh, we kind of might start to look at those. <laughs> Uh, something else going on. Uh, also, when it comes to inhuman and, and demonic type of you know activity, there seems to be a pattern where uh, it goes through. You know, uh, almost there are some researchers who have boiled it down to five different stages, and uh, it usually starts off kind of slow, goes up, hits a crescendo, you know, and, and then sort of tapers down and then stops for. Nobody knows for how long. Sometimes it's just a few days. Sometimes it's years and years. Um, and then it starts up again and then, you know, gets extreme and then we'll stop. And, and so that's another thing we try to look for is that sort of roller coaster of activity and the intensity of the activity. But those are all things that, you know, seems to be a, a tell. But that's just me. You know, again, there are no facts here. It's just patterns recognized in research. There are a lot of researchers and investigators who, you know, think they can tell right away and and think that the demon is telling them their name and that they can get, you know, and that may be true, uh, but I don't have that, that experience. Oh God, that sounds terrifying. (laughs) Like that is not something I ever hoped to experience. Nope. And what, what, what about the idea that most of them talk in Latin? Is that like a common thing or is that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, Latin. Uh, it can be a lot of different languages. It's usually, yeah, yeah. But, but Latin is, is quite uh, popular. Uh, there's an investigator, very close friend, and, and a, a dreamboat of a human. Uh, his name's Chris Fleming, and uh, he's a. But he uh, has taught me a lot when it comes to the demonic side of, of things, and he's even helped me through some things that have happened to me. You know, in understanding it. And he's someone I, I respect and look up to quite a bit. He was on a show called Dead Famous for quite some time and now has a has a few shows here and there. But he's, he's a psychic researcher um, and just uh, very, very smart, very sharp, and just one of the nicest guys. Uh, so if anybody is looking to dive into that world, um, you know, those, those are the guys I, I would look to. Uh, Chris Fleming doesn't consider himself a, a demonologist. Um, but he's very, very well versed in that world. And even when it comes to spiritual warfare, you know, he's very well versed and on that front line. Wow. Cause I was just wondering, I was like, okay, are the demons just trying to keep a dead language alive? You know, I'm like, maybe they're just like, you know, no one's speaking Latin. So they figured they would, I don't know. Yeah. You know, the mechanics, like why would it be that what may, I'm, I'm sure there, there could be, some literature out there that, you know, has reasons for it. But to say definitively, uh, I think it would just be guesswork. Yeah, (laughs) fair enough. (laughs) All right, Danica, one more question, then we'll go to the game. All right, I'm gonna switch gears on (laughs) you. So, which horror film, if you were in it, do you think you would survive the longest? Whoa, my gosh. 
these questions. Which horror movie? It's spooky Halloween uh, time. <laughs> you know, I would have to say maybe Dawn of the Dead. Ooh. You know, because okay. those slow moving, once you figure out, you know, and I've seen enough zombie movies to know you just got to sort of stay ahead of the pack, that kind of thing. And don't become complacent. You become complacent. That's when you get bit, all of that stuff. Um, I, I'd have to say either Dawn, probably Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I, I Great think, film. Oh, it's, oh God, mercy. It's one of the best. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, there's some things that I wish weren't in there. You know, there's some, maybe some racial slurs and that sort of thing. Yes, um, that is a thing. Uh, yes, yes. And, and not to, you know, George Romero says it's, you know, to shed light on it, to make it, you know, to show that it's more egregious. You know, he's one of the first people to use that kind of language to show like, hey, this is shocking and stupid. You shouldn't be like this. Um, but it, it's still, you know, when I watch that movie, I, I, I don't like to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, yes. Um, but it's still a good movie. You know? <laughs> that That it is. And I will take those type of uh, zombies over some of these newer ones where they're running and having relationships. I mean, you know, I guess you got to do what you got to do. So. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'd do well in like the, the Shaun of the Dead world where it's like, you know, you're <laughs> blend in by just, ooh, you just got to do the right vocal work, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> spit right in, or like in The Walking Dead when they just cover themselves in all the gook and like right. imagine what that smells like. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh -uh. yeah, no. no. <laughs> all righty. Well, let's go to the game. That was fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this has been man. I like I, that uh, question. Yay. Well, <clears throat> okay. So. This is our game of Would You Rather. Obviously, there's no wrong answer. So let's just get to it. Danica, do you want to read the first one? All right. Would you rather direct a music video for Ghost, the band, or play drums for Slipknot at Knotfest? Whoa, that's a great question. You know, as much as I love Slipknot and... Uh, I feel like my stamina right now would, uh, they would probably laugh me off the stage and I wouldn't want to do that to them. So I'd go with direct a music video for Ghost. I think that would be really cool. Um, but, you know, playing drums and Slipknot for a show would be pretty dang dope too. <laughs> Man, I, I just saw them a week ago. It's like they put on a show like nothing else and just all the drummers in, in Slipknot are incredible. My favorite is when clown plays the uh the keg that is just a moment oh so good if you guys have a chance to go to a not fest go to a not fest all right here's the next question would you rather oh eat a spider eat a scorpion this is the worst question i've ever been asked in my life yeah this and is from danica uh danica i would just Me. take in over each of those. Uh, I mean, so I let's preface this with, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> um, you know, there are delicacies in some places. You can fry them. You can do all kinds of fun things with them. I would, you know what? Maybe spider because it would be a familiar taste. They say it tastes like crab and lobster mixed with like gunpowder a little bit. Who Whereas says that? Everybody who eats them, like the tarantulas, they say that back and they literally call them like they call uh, crab and lobster spiders of the ocean. And, and part of that yeah. is because they have such a similar uh, uh, profile, you know, in terms of taste. Um, but a scorpion, whenever you hear somebody eating that, they always just say it's just bitter, gross, gnarly, slimy, gross, nasty. Nobody's ever like, oh, it's kind of like lobster. Okay. Um, so I'd probably go with a, a spider. Okay. All right. Mm, lovely. All right, next one, Danica. That's awful. I'm you. Way. What about you guys? Hold on. Uh, okay. What, uh, okay. So um, it dep I would have to know what kind of spider. Um, but I, I'm gonna. I, I will not go near a scorpion. So it's 100% going to be spider. It's mm. yeah. It's gonna be spider. Well, I think now, based on what I've just heard from clearly all the research that Steve's done, um, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna go with spider. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But like tarantula would freak me out if it was like that kind of spider um if it's like a situation want, where like, we're on, bite size yeah like or blended you know like maybe a blended sp i don't know i'm thinking fear factor <laughs> spider smoothie Gross. i don't know 
<laughs> we're, You're we're, disgusting. We're, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But I would do what I had to do. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, next one. <laughs> this is these are some of my favorite things I've ever seen so far. Um, so we have a, a fabulous choice. Would you rather dress up as Juice Demon? Juice Demon. What? Creepy husband. <laughs> Clearly. What is happening? Or or my favorite translation of all time, pubescent frog of silent war. Is this just because they didn't want to pay like for the licensing? Oh, yeah. oh that is like, correct. hundred <laughs> percent. Creepy husband. <laughs> that's what they call that's Gomez Adams, right? Uh -huh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um you know, I'd probably go with the 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 creepy husband because he, he looks kind of dapper and you know. Yeah, I'd I'd go for that. He, he's a dapper lad. But like here's my thing, right? Why not go spooky husband? You know, like yeah, they're... creepy husband makes it sound like there's something way more wrong than we think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, creepy has like you know different connotations. Yes. So it's true. He's trying to sleep with the girl down the street. Is what's going on? <laughs> like, that's what that creepy husband's doing. He's like, when that husband goes to work, I'm going to her house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that yeah. mustache. It's, it tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, it's a, it's a good choice. It's a good you don't choice. Want to be a pubescent frog of Silent War? No. I mean, uh, it, it, what's the silent war part about? I don't even understand well, that. And that, that was my argument was, you know, you know, they have a word for ninja and it's ninja. <laughs> right. But I guess even ninja is licensed. So, like, I mean, it could say like dress up as a pubescent ninja frog, maybe. I don't know. That's yeah. Ninja's taken. Yeah. Can't do that. And so <laughs> yeah. we have to just go with that frog instead of turtle. Shelled hmm. creature? I don't know. Anyway, right. uh, I don't know any frogs that have shells, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's no shells. So anyway, have problems here. <laughs> Here's the next one. Would you rather? I mean, it's a turtle. It's, a, it's like. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, I, just, no, okay. I just put that together somehow that, like, <laughs> it's yeah. not even a. They it's don't even call a it a turtle. It's Amphibian. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Would you rather do a ghost hunters crossover with diners, drive-ins, and dives, or a crossover with Property Brothers? That's a great question. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd have to say diners, drive-ins, and dives, just because I could throw down some cheeseburgers and you know all kinds of stuff uh, while I'm there. Some milkshakes, you know, everything that's delicious in life. Um, whereas Property Brothers. I'm sure they're super fun and awesome, you know, and we're part of the same umbrella. Now, actually, I'm with all these people. We all work for the same network. Um, but I feel like I'd have more fun on diners, drive-ins, and dives. But I have heard the Property Brothers are super nice dudes, so that could be fun, too. See, I feel like if you're driving around with Guy Fieri, I feel like you can, you know, first of all, he has an awesome car. And I feel like all the different locations you go to, you can see which one's, you know, spooky or if there's anything haunting one of the locations mm. and like you said you're on the same network so haunted that's restaurants. right i mean there are so many haunted restaurants it's almost ridiculous yeah danica i thought you said haunted tater tots is that what you said i said jukebox but i like oh. haunted tater tots <laughs> okay. i would definitely eat those yeah <laughs> haunted no how haunted they are i will eat some tater tots <laughs> Delish. All right. We got a couple more, Steve. What's next? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, yes. Data zombie or data vampire? Ooh, uh, zombie. Uh, excuse me. No. Uh, a data vampire. Because zombies are going to have, like, they're just going to smell awful and, you know, be rotting. At least a vampire, most likely they shower. You know, most likely after they drink like blood, they're going to wash their teeth, uh, brush mm -hmm. their teeth. Right. That, that sort of thing. So I'd okay. say they... Empire. And I mean, just on, not that I would ever date anybody based on looks, because that obviously we all know is very selfish or, you know, just, just not selfish, but just a bad way to do things. Um, but, you know, that, that doesn't hurt that she would be not rotted. You know. <laughs> so not someone with putrefied skin. Got yeah, that, that's a, I'll <laughs> skip necrosis for now. <laughs> like, let's for just, now. Uh, Okay. Uh, unless I can get like early onset zombie, if that's a thing, like if I could date an early onset zombie before it all goes down the hill, maybe. Okay. But I think a vampire Got would be it. kind of fun. Yeah. And I feel like they would yeah. be a little more um, like, 
fun, hygienic? you know, and hygienic for sure, but a little more fun. Like if you're dating a zombie, you're just gonna like. You're just hunting for brains. No. Right, and like, you know, they're just gonna limp over to the bed and just get in there. Like a vampire's, you know, they're gonna have some fervor behind it. I, I love that you approach this like as a hygienic question. That's the first time I've ever seen anyone take this question that way and I respect it mm -hmm. very much. Yes, very well, much. Uh, yeah. You know, vampires using mouthwash, a zombie is just rotting. It's uh, There you fair. go, guys. There Good it point. is. Good point. Okay. <laughs> so dumb. We're all learning from you. <laughs> oh, I'm so crazy. I'm all losing right. my job. Not <laughs> I, I don't think that there's any Highly zombies down. watching right now that are gonna write in and be like, Steve said the petrified <laughs> flesh was <laughs> it's gonna be okay. <laughs> It's gonna be fine. Uh, I guess this one's me. Okay, would you rather own the Amityville house or the Poltergeist house? That's a that's a good one. Um, you know, I would like to own the Amityville house just so I can investigate it and say, uh, you know, I mean, most investigators are under the impression just from knowing people who lived in the house, knowing that that it's, you know, just a, a bit of. Uh, Hollywood hubbub in that regard, but it would be awesome to investigate it and really see what's up there. Uh, we've tried many times. Uh, I remember we, or one of our executive producers back in the early Ghost Hunters days actually went to the Amityville house and knocked on the door because they wouldn't return phone calls and all that stuff. And they told us that they would, didn't want to perpetuate that stereotype anymore, so they turned us down. But then they opened up the house for like, Halloween haunted house walkthrough thing. I was like, well, I don't know. That was really confusing. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to say the Amityville house, Poltergeist house would be cool. I like that modern split level kind of thing. Ditto. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Go nice. for the Amityville house. Not to mention resale value is probably much better. Fair. <laughs> All right. Appreciate the resale value. All right. <laughs> Next, location, location, location. All right. Mm -hmm. Danica. Uh, oh, yes. Would you rather listen to Halloween Ooh. by the Misfits on repeat for 24 hours or listen oh, to Pet Cemetery by the Ramones for 24 hours? Uh, Halloween uh, by the Misfits, 24 hours. Oh, I mean, the Ramones are great, but uh, Misfits, that's uh, sort of in, in my heart. So, yeah. I'm on your side. <laughs> yes. I, I do love Pet Cemetery, though. I mean, I, yeah. I, I kind of, of love that fabulous. song very much. Uh, yeah. Okay. Two more, Steve. Here we go. Would you rather... Open a paranormal museum of haunts or have a graphic novel made based off taps? Oh, it's a, that's a, a pretty interesting question. You know, um, opening a paranormal museum is always something that investigators think of doing. So it'd be cool. You know, they're fun to go through and, and look at and that sort of thing. But um, there are a few that are out there, obviously, at a, at a pretty high level. Um, but having a graphic novel, you know, actual stories based off of us and a series that could keep going, I think would be a lot of fun for all of us. You know, I'll go for that because it would include me and my friends and what we do. And it would be fun as a shared experience where if I open a paranormal museum, it's just going to be for me, you know, and <laughs> people to come and, you know, um, I think the other one would be a, a better pursuit. Um, I kind of, not that I have a museum of fonts, but you know, my house does have a tremendous amount of, of haunted stuff in it and things that you would think would be haunted. And, and uh, so maybe I can just have my friends come over, like walk around and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> take the graphic novel. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Yep. I think that'd be fun. I'll leave the museum up to the professionals who actually want to curate things and know about, you know, the inner workings of, because if you're gonna open a museum, you gotta know the lineage, you gotta know the history, you gotta know all of that. I know some don't. There are a few out there who just uh, grab stuff and put them, you know, do whatever. But uh, the majority of them want their, you know, eyes dotted and their T's crossed and all that stuff. And you got to make sure that things stay put where they're supposed to be. Like That's right. In glass and never allowed out ever again. That's right. So. Yep. <sighs> all right. Final <laughs> one. Danica, take it home. All right. Oh, yes. Would you rather do a paranormal investigation with no vision or do a paranormal investigation with your hearing impaired? Ooh, you know, just for safety's sake, I would say I would rather do it with hearing impaired, you know, because I won't fall and kill myself. I won't fall downstairs. I won't do any of, of that stuff. Um, 
one of our dearest friends on the planet, uh, who's one of our camera operators on a case recently, fell through the stairs uh, and landed in the basement and has to have surgery now. Very, oh, no. very awful. Yeah, um, and he's uh, someone very, very, very close to me in, in Tango, and and you know he's one of our, our best friends. Very, very sad. Um, hearing, you know, you also want that, but I feel like having your vision will probably service you much better in an investigation than, uh, you know, not being able to hear. Wow. Well, uh, sending, you know, a lot of positive, <laughs> yeah. quick healing vibes to your friends and hopefully sure. they'll recover. That's terrifying. That's horrible. Thank here. you. That's right. His name's Mitch. He's the coolest. Well, Mitch, the Peter coolest. recovery, <laughs> Mitch. <laughs> Yes. Um, really quick before we do wrap this up, Steve, I hope this is okay to ask and I hope it's not too triggering, but somebody wanted to know what it is about spiders that are uh uh for you. I gotta go. Uh, how do I exit uh, out of this? No, I know. Okay, and if you don't want to talk about it, then it's completely, <laughs> no, no. absolutely fine. Uh, have to talk completely about kidding. It. Um, no, uh, you know, I don't really know. Uh, it, it's something that has always been there. Uh, ever since I can remember, I see one and I just go bonkers, my, my I, something else takes over and I just start screaming. It, it's the most embarrassing thing ever, uh, but it, it happens. Um, I've read many, many, many times that that uh, phobia, because it is a phobia, well actually no, it's not. I have a fear of spiders, but I have a phobia of flying. There's a bit of a, a difference. Like yeah. uh, a fear, you're just afraid of things. It gets considered a phobia when it stops you from doing your something you would do otherwise, right? Then it becomes a phobia. So obviously not being able to fly stops me from a lot of life activities that I would do otherwise. I still power through the spider thing. Um, so I think that's just a fear, but I have read many, many times that um, that comes from when you're in the womb, it's like it develops there and it may be passed down like genetically, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, very, very strange because uh, babies are born afraid of spiders. And it's one of the only things that they're born innately uh, afraid of. Uh, kind of strange, right? Oh, I've wow. never heard that. That's well, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. very, and, very fascinating. And, huh. and you're not alone in your fears and phobias. I yeah. mean, look. <laughs> There are trains and automobiles to get us places, cruises, mm -hmm. ships, ferries, and uh, bicycles. You know, <laughs> bicycles are fun too. Feet. Bicycles. Feet. All right. I'm going to get on my pedal bike down to Disney next time. Right? <laughs> like, uh, but please dress like Pee Wee Herman if you're going to do that. So. Ooh. <laughs> I will. <laughs> my well, bike, Pee Wee. <laughs> what you, uh, now I need to watch. Pee rabbit hole adventure Going yeah. down I mean, it's rabbit so hole. good it's so yes good. classic well steve thank you so much as always this has been an absolute joy and of thank course you. Thank you, thank one you. more time we have to plug guys on halloween make sure to tune in to there's the graphic there it is. ghost hunter uh, returns on halloween so make sure you guys Spooky watch halloween. <laughs> so steve before we do wrap this up is there any final thoughts you want to leave us with here Yes, uh, have a great Halloween, everybody. Kids, uh, check your candy, even if your parents uh, don't get to it first. Don't sneak any, you know, I used to do that, sneak some candy before my parents could check them. There could be something crazy in there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, have a good, safe Halloween, dress up, have fun, and uh, thank you, everybody. I, I think you'll really like uh, what's coming up. Of course, we have the, the Halloween special on uh, Halloween, October 31st, and it's gonna be, well, it is, I've seen it. It's really, really, really awesome. And uh, all of the episodes this season, we've caught some really, really intense things and uh, been a lot of fun with some of my best friends. So thank you for letting me talk about it. Well, thank you for joining You're us so again. Pleased. Yes, uh, before we wrap it up, guys, we wanna go over our upcoming guest that we have, which is crazy that it's gonna be November and wow. Okay, so next week we have our buddy AJ. He is the vocalist from Werewolves. And then the following Tuesday, we're welcoming back Maddie Riley and his buddy, Matt Fuller from the band Puddle of Mud. Uh, we also have Clownvis, which we're very excited about. Clownvis. <laughs> yes, this is going to be a fun one. And then uh, on the November 18th, we're welcoming Rob himself from Jackass and Viva La Bam. So we have a lot of cool stuff. And then Steve, we'll have to do this again because I just feel like you are 
seriously one of our favorites. You are always you. so wonderful and pleasant. And uh, yeah, and ho hopefully Thank you. one of these days in person. That's what I'm right? hoping for. That's we'll, the goal. <laughs> we'll actually <laughs> meet in it. person. We'll, we'll be at the same con together one day. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. I'm into it. Or Put Broadway, it anything. Yeah, anything. Broadway. We'll take it all. Well, Steve, thank you so much. All Once right, again, see you guys. October 31st. We'll see you thank guys you. real soon. Oh, wow. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.